let's do it. All right, welcome back to another video. And today we are going to be discussing about film and what we saw and what our thoughts are and could have been. This is going to be a separate thing where we talk about movies we've seen and sequels that are yet to come or what we want to see for the next part. But today's topic is going to be Man of Steel. And I'm sure you guys have all seen Man of Steel. Yes, sir. It's a good movie. Yes. Outstanding movie. One of the best. Better than most movies nowadays and ever. Like yes. Really, really good Include, yes. Better than all the Marvel movies. Yeah. So, I'm going to, I guess I'll start with my initial thoughts. Um, this movie, when it first came out back in 2013, which was like over a decade ago, I wasn't that much into Superman. I always thought that before I watched Man of Steel, I always thought that the character was kind of a bit bland and a bit boring, but this movie made me understand a whole new look on Superman, what his struggles are, what his uh, ties to humanity are, how he balances his life with all these struggles that he's dealing with, like being the only one alone and with his kind, but also being a new person to earth and adapting to the ways that humanity is and i also like the real take realistic take that they went down for portraying superman if he was like real life and how mm -hmm. some of the world would react to would react and how basically our military would like cooperate with him and work with him but, and, but overall, it was a very, very good visual film. Like, the music and everything is really good. The actors did an amazing job. And again, Henry Cavill's Superman. So The real Superman, exactly. Sounds, yeah, that and and uh, that's it for with my thoughts. Uh, anyone want to go next? Me. I want to. Okay. So... Uh... My relationship with Man of Steel goes way back to the original teaser around 2013, 2012. You know, the first teaser that came out. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was a child, I hated Superman. I hated him with a passion. Like, Why do you hate him? Because of the same reasons that, that Nick didn't like him. I, I felt he was boring. I hadn't watched any Superman movie, any Anything related to Superman, I didn't know jack shit about the character, but I I would watch, I would say I hated him without knowing the character. So one day, uh I I was watch I was in theaters, don't remember which movie I was going to watch, but I remember I was watching the trailers before it. And it starts this 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 trailer with uh with a picture of a boat and a guy just walking on the snow and I'm like what what, what movie is this? and then there comes the narration but I like and I think it was a Jonathan Kent Thank narration you. I don't think it was the Jor El narration I think it was the narration from Jonathan Kent mm -hmm. and I was watching you know and I immediately thought this must be a drama like a, a a search for identity or something like that drama and then. She shows Superman flying, comes up the title, and I'm like, wait, this is a superhero movie? This is Superman? And I still remember that day, you know, I still remember that. And I was like, you need to understand, I was like eight when I saw that trailer. I still remember it. I think it's one of my earliest memories. Mm -hmm. It is, is watching the Man of Steel trailer on theaters. That's how much it impacted me. And I loved it when the movie came out. And and that was the first thing, first step I came to now being a Clark Kent fan. And I yeah. think you need to make that distinction. This is a distinction that many people don't understand about Man of Steel. And that Man of Steel comes with the interpretation that Clark Kent's the real person. Superman's the disguise. So I love that. And, uh, because that's how it is in the comics. <laughs> but the movies... But the movies... Since the donor era have ignored that. But like so I keep saying I'm not a Superman fan, I Clark Kent fan. Mm -hmm. And that's different. 
Okay, for me, I would say that I wasn't interested at first until I watched it in 2021, where when the Snyder Cut released. This is when I found out it was like the best Superman film. Oh, by far. Yeah. No offense to Donner, but by far is the best is Man of Steel. I'm just, I just don't like it why people want to go back to the old classic Richard Donner Superman style, even though that's so like outdated. Yes. Like, I was... It's not supposed to be like. <laughs> He's not supposed to be more like a comedic. I mean, he can be light tone. I mean, lighthearted at times, but nah. but but people forget about the seventy eight movie is that it wasn't going out to be comedic. Like there was comedy, there was several more lighthearted moments, but like the movie wasn't a comedy. In in what it pisses me off about again, I think my vision is kind of biased because. So many Richard Donner fans, so-called Richard Donner fans, because they claim to like the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. Yeah. But but they but they go against everything they stand for by harassing Jack, harassing his family, celebrating when Alton died, all that bullshit they do. So like they claim to support the Don- the Donner movies, but they go everything against everything they stand for. And I like so I'm biased again, you know, it's kind of biased when I talk about those movies. But I still enjoy them. Mm-hmm. One second. All right. Uh, any other thoughts? Oh, um, thing is, when I was younger, I mean, guess when I when I found out how the when the Man of Steel movie was coming out, I think when I was younger, I didn't really understand the the who was the Man of the Steel, but also who the character I actually related to in DC. But when I saw the, I would say the trailer a bit, a bit of the trailer, I did see like how it connected to the character, which we all know as the Superman, which is his name. Yeah. Which is his name. Um, but the thing I kind of think when I was um, understand why they come the Man of Steel and, and and also his past, his origin, his powers, and everything. Then when I saw how they how he how it connects to him because you know he has powers he, he every time a bullet hits him in the bu- in his stomach and all that or whatever he you, you don't get hit by any he, he don't feel any pain at all which is makes it pretty cool because yeah i think it goes back when to like usually the, the day i was a kid to you know seeing superman in the two point of, of adulthood and all that mm-hmm. and i kind of I like I like his Zack Snyder's version, Zack Snyder, and these other versions they did with the Supermans, and seeing how they grow over the years. Yeah. But uh, when he said about the people just be hating, harassing Zack Snyder, Zack, Zack Snyder, and all that, I was like, I don't know why they be you know harassing him. I mean, even though he did a good job for the uh the Zack Snyder first one, for this uh for the Justice League and all that, I think when they when they put more of the the music, the art, and how they put them together, it just it really impressed me a bit. Especially the the version of Superman, you know, that we have for that movie, um, Zack Snyder verse, right? Was that the Justice League one? You mean Zack Snyder's Justice League? Yeah, that one. Yeah, and yeah. I think I like about the the how they put the the title and also the art they did for the movie. Right. Mm-hmm. I. I was going to say one thing I love about this movie, and I think it's something that's very hard to find in a superhero movie, is this portrayal of humanity. Because I love how the humans, they they don't sit back and wait for for someone to come and save them. You know, like, there's a big problem I have with the first Avengers, was that the military doesn't show up. Like the 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 the, the like Avengers in general, the, the the MCU in general, don't seem to have any idea that there is a military, that there is like other organizations that could help. Like occasionally we're gonna see the police force, but that's rare as well, you know. Or the National Guard. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I love how men of steel they give us small things about like for the the military trying to do their best to contain the Kryptonian threat, like. And again, they are completely outclassed, but they, they improvise and they adapt. And that's something I lo- love in this movie because and not even the military only, like there's that that scene when the when the Kryptonians and Clark are going to fight in the middle of the street, you know, the Battle of Smallville, you can see many civilians yep. opening their doors in the stores so that other people can get in and, and help and hide from, from the Kryptonians. I love yeah. that. 
Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like, this. I like, I like when they usually, usually, usually connect them, um, them Smallville to Metropolis and all that, and it's really interesting how it connects to the, you know, the place, the places with one where Superman, you know, fights fights the villains over there and all the kinds of villains he fights over the years, but also the one place he, he, um, I think fight, I think fights with against. I think he also can't fight this uh, Doomsday. I think Doomsday was it? I forget, was it Metropolis or was it Smallville? They fought at the two two locations and all. Um, they fight Zod which, and Superman specifically. It's Metropolis, so they briefly spar in Smallville, but the bulk of the fight, it, they, he fights for in Smallville and he fights Zod in Metropolis. Yeah, yeah, they have really interesting fight scenes, and including usually, like, I'm surprised how like the um usually like using the two different locations, they do have interesting like connection, like usually the different different times and all that for their fights and all. Yeah, but especially like mm -hmm. different different villains, like uh, you know, Zod, the other guy, also the other character you mentioned, but also usually Doomsday, Doomsday easy Doomsday is like rival with the right. Superman, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I like and all. Not to mention, like I said earlier, it's really realistic. That too, yeah. yeah. So that's what I like about the... Uh, I, it gets the I consequences right. Uh, I wouldn't say realistic because superpowers and all, but it's like believable, I would say. I think it's better than this term. No, no. I'm believable. Saying, I'm, I'm saying like realistic in a way that... Yeah, I know. I'm saying believable. What I think would it's happen a better term man, because realistic because... I get it, but I like saying that yeah, I think the proper term should be believable because if you say realism, there's there can be this trauma and argument that oh, they have superpowers and not real. But like I'm yeah. saying that it's more grounded or more believable the fact that there are consequences. Like, like and and we're gonna yeah. go more into that in BVS. I don't want to talk much about this here, but the 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 human culture in human civilization uh, it gets altered by the presence of superheroes. That's interesting as well. That's you. Again, BVS is much about those consequences. So we're gonna I think we should call talk more about that later. So uh, what, else? what makes the game better? I mean not game, the movie better. The movie, yeah. Do they kind of have they say like oh how actions have you know, how actions have consequences depending on if it is on how things go it's usually good turns and bad turns but sometimes people yeah. use like for you know usually like for terms like you know you know powers and all that can somehow be used for good but you know it's which just like this was the pros but also the cons you know how consequences you mentioned the the consequences the consequences are like the cons of yeah it. but but I think that we should. Should talk more about the consequences when we go talk about BVS, just mentioning in passing, you know. But yeah, uh, again, I think that the original, like, what else was I going to say? Oh, oh, Man of Steel. Sorry, I, I got confused, got, got memory in my head. Uh, let me just remember what I was going to talk as well. Uh, I really love the color palette. I really love it. I know it's a point of contention, but I love the color palette. I love specifically how each each part of the planet has a different color palette. How small view is warmer. Uh, Krypton is very like reddish to so the red sun and the alien nature. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, small view is very like warm to so this Clark's home he grew up there. Is where he belongs, and then there is Metropolis, and especially the Arctic, which is very cold, very desaturated. And the point is that you know, the 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 Clark's not home there. He he's wandering. He doesn't know his per place. You know, mm -hmm. I find that interesting. Right. So, yeah. And uh, anyway, moving on. Now for what could have been Man of Steel 2, 
Anyone want to share some thoughts on what we heard so far of what Man of Steel 2 could have been? Well, I, I, I heard it was going to be Brainiac, so I think that they should leave Brainiac for the third one. Yeah. My pick would be that the second one is about finding Supergirl and make it more a drama. And then have the third one be the action, you know, with Brainiac. So this the, the second one be much more character focused. I don't want to get into a Superman Returns level where the character doesn't do nothing, but do something more much more character focused, you know. Well, the thing that they could do for like uh, if they were doing the trilogy route is like you said, find Supergirl, but also have like introduce more of like comic villains like uh for example yep. Met Metallo. Uh, like Metallo. I would pitch the second one be about finding Supergirl. Yeah, I, I know. Inter -gang I know. As the, it have Intergang as the bad guys. It have a plot line that would stretch to multiple movies. Did you hear what about, my... I heard Metallo. Metallo is interesting, but let me just finish it off. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Met Metallo as the... as the villain would be interesting, but I, I, I really want to see Intergang. And like Intergang... In more of a conspiracy level, you know, more of a mystery, and have it be Supergirl arrives on Earth and Luthor gets help for Intergang to try to secure her for himself and make it more of a, of a like, thriller in the sense that it keeps building up, you know, and set the climax of Man of Steel too at the same time as the Batfleck movie, you know. Yeah, but and, that's another subject. Yeah, and. And one thing that would be... Good. And then the third one is Brainiac with a hint at the Man of Steel 2 hints. The last words of the movie is hinting at Brainiac's arrival. And then the third one is they fight Brainiac, Kyra and Clark. I was also going to say uh, for the second one, there would be there should also be a Martian Manhunter cameo. They should have a Martian Manhunter cameo, agreed. Yeah. You know they already did that in Zack Snyder's Justice League. They did, but I, I want more of that. Um, yeah. I think Lois should have more screen presence as well. Not that she doesn't have a great screen presence well, here, but I think she should... should have more of a Lois. Well, well, similar like in Man of... Well, here's the thing. Like... More of their relationship, I mean. You know, have more of that, you know. I think well, that... that I, I love the scenes they are together in, in the Snyderverse, but I think they're too little for a while. Yeah, but she should also have like more relevance to the story, like helping. Yeah, I agree. Right? I agree. Help, like helping Superman and say and being saved by Superman. I know they could have her more of a mystery element as well for her. Like he did in BVS. BVS did very well, Lois Lane. We're going to talk there more. But I think that again, if we go for Supergirl as the as the main focus of the second one, you know, main focus in the sense that this is focused on her arrival on Earth. And Clark helping her now. He's the mentor, you know. <laughs> like having having something like that, you know. Yeah, like, like it would, and it would kind of be like uh, the one movie, uh, Batman Superman Apocalypse, where like Supergirl. Yes, yes. And Clark showing her around Metropolis. Yeah, but more of a of a also a. Of a family element, I think a mix between Batman Superman Apocalypse and some of Superman and Lois as well, with that human like family element, so they can have like you know, because right. one of the biggest complaints that they have of, of the Supergirl character, I have as well, I agree, is that Clark never adopts Supergirl, like he never adopts her, it's completely out of character for him to do so, you know. So, I think that they should for him not to adopt Kara. So in, since he, he is with Lois, uh, do it, do that, you know. Have him take her in and, and teach her that way and then have that that kind of character growth, you know. And have yeah. cars, uh, have PTSD and have lots of stuff. You know, focus more on her as well. And have Clark be a mentor figure, like. Yeah, and since we're on the subject of uh, the Kryptonians, I... Yes. I I have uh, a question. So, I, and I want to know your guys' thoughts on this. Uh, what was your reactions when uh, Zach and the others uh, 
said at the full circle event a year and a half ago when where they said that uh the gods and the Kryptonians were relate were originally related, and Ares was the one to cause the scout ship to crash. What do you guys think about that? I find it an interesting idea. I, I don't know how they would have done it. I presume that the idea was that the Amazons were like generic experiments with humans, you know, like they they grabbed some humans, experimented on them, created the Amazons, and then or or maybe. What what it could also be is uh, it could be like uh, similar to what uh, like what happened in Invincible where some Viltrumites came to Earth and like their hybrids. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah. Like it would be, but, I, I but their power what... sets are too too different and like Amazons have more of the immortality angle than the Kryptonians, you know. So I I don't think that would work. But no, I guess no, no, as no. you're I'm saying, saying like I'm saying like maybe something along on that angle yeah i get angle. it yeah again i think it should be experiments like they are they are hybrids they are they mac they like work with a human dna because on roman's powers are not that prevalent uh compared to kryptonians you know she has lots of powers lots of abilities but like she's not as powerful so they could have like for example uh she's not bulletproof so like uh it's not as fast she's not as strong so they could have that angle you know of 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 uh yeah of like the of being humans once and the, the kryptonians hijack them and like make them into amazons then put them on Temescara. and then when when diana and then have the whole angle. I, I I say I'm gonna say it. I like the idea of making a meta. It is called a meta origin when you connect all the origins of the characters. I like the idea of making the the Kryptonians the the old the old gods. Yeah. But I still prefer the idea from the new god script. The rejected new god script. Oh, you mean the original one that was connected to Zack Snyder's Justice League? Yes. Yeah, where yes. uh, yeah, where uh, where step or... where Dark Side was the one to help Iris kill Zeus, yeah. was the one that did that dirt work for Iris. Yeah, and, and uh, that's why and they he, are the new gods. And he absorb. And there was also something else too, like uh, I guess Big Bardo was supposed to be related to the Amazons. But I didn't heard about that one. That yeah, scene. Apparent, but funny, interesting. Apparently, to uh. Hold on. Are you guys are familiar with uh, RK Outpost? RK Outpost. Um, he's a YouTuber. I then don't look in much into his stuff. I have more of a currently I'm more with the Mikeyverse. Well, 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 the good thing is he's pro Snyderverse, so oh you, nice. You don't have to worry about that. But was, there was one. Was, there was one video that he made a while back where the where it was around the time where the original New Gods script, well, part of it got leaked, and we got some details, which what we just discussed was leaked online. Mm -hmm. And uh, after, and long story short, I'll send I'll send you guys the video uh, after, because we got like nine minutes left, but that's, yeah, yeah. that's kind of a discussion for another time. All right. So... So when did the leak thing was like on like on like social media like social media app like maybe like Twitter Instagram or whatever kind of leaked them all or was it on YouTube kind of leaked everywhere everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yo he no that that's crazy that'd be crazy they yeah, fucked up it's, it's a it's a good leak though oh it is oh because okay. yeah so anyway but like wow. I said that's that's a different story so. Oh so, yeah. Anyways, getting back to the one topic. Um, oh yeah. So in Man of Steel, when they said, when they delved into the topic about like uh, Kryptonian colonizations, do you think there were more of them out there that have not been discovered yet, or have we have not seen yet? Yeah, I think there might be a possibility that some could be, they might come out of hiding, I guess. Maybe some of them are out there. I mean, maybe Supergirl's planet was one of them, you know? 
like I like say, like my theory because uh, Supergirl's planet it must be one of the Kryptonian colonies because she can't be from Krypton itself, considering the origin story we see in this movie. Yeah. And so like I like the idea of her being from like ah you know get yeah, the same. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool to see that like, in the next, like later on, like they show like maybe some, like some Krypton and there's some some Kryptonians. Um, they'd be out there, reveal themselves somehow. That'd be that'd be cool and all. That right. would be cool. Yeah, especially super involved. Yeah, and like other characters involved. Yeah, I I I, I gonna like yeah. Right. Yeah. What but, else? Uh, uh, did you know? I think we should have organized more of this discussion, but we focus that on next time. Uh, Zod, what do you guys think of Michael Shannon's performance? Well, like I said, well, like I said earlier, all the actors, the actresses, did an amazing job. And... Yeah, I just pointing out that I like much of Zod. I got to go. Perfect. Uh, I, I, yeah, but I think that one great thing about this movie is that Zod, he is the villain, but he's also a, a symptom of the problem, with the problem being Krypton, Krypton's culture and their and their caste system and all that stuff, you know? Yeah, and people, some people were saying that if he colonized Mars, he could have saved his entire race. Yeah, but the point, he's not a diplomat. He doesn't care about the humans. Why bother? Is it wait, is it Mars dead? Like the, the planet kind of Mars? Because I mean, it used to be it used to have life, but it kind of died. The, the planet kind of died. No, no, no. They what people are saying were saying was they could have terraformed Mars, Mars. and and just well, yeah, you know. but but they they wouldn't have. But why bother? Why bother if you can terraform yeah. Earth and already take out the possible threat of humanity? But they also way destroy you. Well, these are other people's words, not mine. So. Yeah. I know, I'm just pointing that out. That those people are idiots. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much everyone who gave a bad review of this movie is an idiot. Agreed. Yeah. Same critics that hated Man on Fire. Man of what? Man, Man on Fire. Fire. The visual Denzel. Directed Denzel, directed by Denzel, and you know, uh, acting we starring Denzel and directed by Tony Scott. Right. I mean, haters got hate, haters be hater man, but they don't understand they got the lack of taste, bro. They're idiots. That's all there is. Nothing more. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna say one thing real quick. This, they're they are the reason why cinema is dead. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And buried. No, not Barry. It can rise again. Don't worry. Yeah. But plus, plus, you know, never say never. So. Yeah. Anyway, uh, our our what was going to say? Forgot. I was going to say. All right. Uh, till next time, I guess. I yes. don't know. Let's let's all well. We're gonna meet in a little bit after to watch uh, Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice. We'll see. <laughs> I can't come. Sorry. Oh, I have stuff to do. I think so. Uh, uh, I mean, YouTube now? I mean, a YouTuber, I guess. I mean, I mean maybe... I have a YouTube channel as well. Geek Defense Initiative. Nobody watches it. So if oh. you guys want to subscribe, you're welcome. I'm pretty... I already did, but yeah. Oh, if you do? Uh, wait, oh, Don't also... watch the videos. Uh, for YouTube channel, is it okay if you can, if you can, if you can like, send me like a link or something? Yeah, that will, that will be... We'll do that after. All right. Uh, but yeah. So uh, yeah, that's it for today's topic. And next topic will be tomorrow, and we'll be talking about Batman for Superman: Dawn of Justice. And All right. About what we thought about it, and we'll go from there. All right. So, Sounds good. All right. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.